Alexander Gelyevich Dugin Russian, Alexander Gelyevich Dugin born 7 January 1962 is a Russian philosopher, political analyst, and strategist known for his fascist views. He has close ties with the Kremlin and the Russian military, having served as an advisor to State Duma Speaker Gennady Selesnyov and key member of the ruling United Russia Party Sergei Narishkin. However, commentators dispute his influence, in the words of journalist Alexander Nevzorov. If we had had Sergei Kurginian and Dugin instead of Putin, there would have been hell for all of us to pay, they would have unleashed a European and world war without a shadow of a doubt, without considering consequences at all. But, Dugin and Kurginian do not have the slightest impact on what is going on in the Kremlin and do not even get coaching there. Dugin was the leading organizer of the National Bolshevik Party, National Bolshevik Front, and Eurasia Party. He is the author of more than 30 books, among them Foundations of Geopolitics 1997 and The Fourth Political Theory 2009. Early life and education Dugin was born in Moscow, into the family of a colonel general in the Soviet military intelligence and candidate of law Jali Alexandrovich Dugin and his wife Galina, a doctor and candidate of medicine. In 1979, he entered the Moscow Aviation Institute, but did not graduate due to his association with thinking contrary to the ongoing regime, which caused him to be expelled from the institute. A self-taught polyglot, he read avidly in his fields of interest, from Middle Age and Renaissance European authors to Oriental studies, translating into Russian from English, French, and German, and also the writings of Italian fascist Julius Evola and French author René Guénon. Religious traditionalism, conservatism, hermeticism and poetry were topics followed closely by Dugan and a group of philosophers – thinkers also interested in traditionalism, Gaidar Dz Hemel, Evgeny Golovin, Yuri Mamlaev, Vladimir Stepanov, and Sergei Jigalkin. He graduated in economics and management at Novorkisk Meliorative State Academy in the Rostov Oblast in 1999, defending his postgraduate degree in philosophy at Rostov-on-Don with the dissertation. The Evolution of Paradigmatic Foundations of Science", in 2000, and the Ph.D. in the Faculty of Sociology at the same university in 2004 with the theme, The Transformation of the Political Structures and Institutions in the Process of Modernization of the Civil Society. In 1998 Dugan, Gaidar D. Z. Hemel, and Evgeny Golovin created a study center based on their long-time shared interests called the New University Project. Career and political views Dugan in the 1980s was a dissident and an anti-communist. Dugan worked as a journalist before becoming involved in politics just before the fall of communism. In 1988 he and his friend Gaidar D. Z. Hemel joined the nationalist group Pamyat. He helped to write the political program for the newly refounded Communist Party of the Russian Federation under the leadership of Gennady Zyuganov. In his 1997 article, Fascism, Borderless and Red, Dugin proclaimed the arrival of a genuine, true, radically revolutionary and consistent, fascist fascism in Russia. He believes that it was by no means the racist and chauvinist aspects of National Socialism that determined the nature of its ideology. The excesses of this ideology in Germany are a matter exclusively of the Germans. While Russian fascism is a combination of natural national conservatism with a passionate desire for true changes. Waffen SS and especially the scientific sector of this organization, Ananerb, was an intellectual oasis in the framework of the National Socialist regime, according to him. Dugan soon began publishing his own journal entitled Elementi, which initially began by praising Franco-Belgian Jean-François Thuriart, supporter of a Europe, from Dublin to Vladivostok. Consistently glorifying both Tsarist and Stalinist Russia, Elementi also revealed Dugan's admiration for Julius Evola. Dugan also collaborated with the weekly journal Den, the Day, a bastion of Russian anti cosmopolitanism previously directed by Alexander Prokhanov. Dugan was amongst the earliest members of the National Bolshevik Party and convinced Eduard Limonov to enter the political arena in 1994. 
a part of hard-line nationalist NBP members, supported by Dugan, split off to form the more right-wing, anti-liberal, anti-left, anti-Kasparov aggressive nationalist organization, National Bolshevik Front. After breaking with Limonov, he became close to Yevgeny Primakov and later to Vladimir Putin's circle. Dugan claims to be disapproving of liberalism and the West, particularly American hegemony. His assertions show that he likes Stalin and the Soviet Union. We are on the side of Stalin and the Soviet Union. He calls himself a conservative and says, We, conservatives, want a strong, solid state, want order and healthy family, positive values, the reinforcing of the importance of religion and the church in society. He adds, We want patriotic radio, TV, patriotic experts, patriotic clubs. We want the media that expresses national interests. Topic: Formation of the Eurasia Movement. The Eurasia Party, later Eurasia Movement, was officially recognized by the Ministry of Justice on the 31st of May 2001. The Eurasia Party claims support by some military circles and by leaders of the Orthodox Christian faith in Russia, and the party hopes to play a key role in attempts to resolve the Chechen problem, with the objective of setting the stage for Dugan's dream of a Russian strategic alliance with European and Middle Eastern states, primarily Iran. Dugan's ideas, particularly those on a Turkic-Slavic alliance in the Eurasian sphere, have recently become popular among certain nationalistic circles in Turkey, most notably among alleged members of the Ergenekon network, which is the subject of a high-profile trial on charges of conspiracy. Dugan's Eurasianist ideology has also been linked to his adherence to the doctrines of the traditionalist school. Dugan's traditionalist beliefs are the subject of a book-length study by Jay Heiser, The American Empire Should Be Destroyed. Alexander Dugan and the Perils of Immanentized Eschatology, Dugan also advocates for a Russo-Arab alliance. In principle, Eurasia and our space, the heartland Russia, remain the staging area of a new anti-bourgeois, anti-American revolution. The new Eurasian Empire will be constructed on the fundamental principle of the common enemy, the rejection of Atlanticism, strategic control of the USA, and the refusal to allow liberal values to dominate us. This common civilizational impulse will be the basis of a political and strategic union. The reborn Russia, according to Dugan's concept, is said by Charles Clover of the Financial Times to be a slightly remade version of the Soviet Union with echoes of 1984 by George Orwell, where Eurasia was one of three continent-sized super-states including East Asia and Oceania as the other two and was participating in endless war between them. In the Eurasian public discourse sphere, the totalitarian communist policy deployed in over three decades of works by various international groups that are part of the movement, is a version of reintegration of the post-Soviet space into a Eurasian sphere of influence for Russia. The North American program works with a wide range of partners from all sectors of civil society and is advanced through grant-making, advocacy and research, regional initiatives, and close engagement. He has criticized the Euro-Atlantic Involvement in the 2004 Ukrainian presidential election as a scheme to create a cordon sanitaire around Russia, much like the French and British attempt post World War I. In 2005, Dugan founded the Eurasian Youth Union of Russia as the youth wing of the international Eurasia movement. Ukraine gave Dugan a five year entry ban, starting in June 2006, and Kiev declared him a persona non grata in 2007. His Eurasian Youth Union was banned in Ukraine. In 2007, the Security Service of Ukraine identified persons of the Eurasian Youth Union who committed vandalism on Hovrla in 2007. They climbed up the mountain of Hovrla, imitated sawing down the details of the construction in the form of the small coat of arms of Ukraine by tools brought with them and painted the emblem of the Eurasian Youth Union on the memorial symbol of the Constitution of Ukraine. He was deported back to Russia when he arrived at Simferopol International Airport in June 2007. Before war broke out between Russia and Georgia in 2008, Dugan visited South Ossetia and predicted, Our troops will occupy the Georgian capital Tbilisi, the entire country, and perhaps even Ukraine and the Crimean Peninsula, which is historically part of Russia, anyway. Quote, Afterwards, he said Russia should not stop at liberating South Ossetia but should move further. And we have to do something similar in Ukraine. 
Quote, in 2008, Dugan stated that Russia should repeat the Georgian scenario in Ukraine, namely attack it. In September 2008, after the Russian-Georgian War, he did not hide his anger towards Putin, who dared not drop the other shoe and restore the empire. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Russian Orthodoxy and Rodnovery. Dugin was baptized at the age of six in the Russian Orthodox Church of Michurinsk by his great grandmother Elena Mikhailovna Kargaltseva. Since 1999, he formally embraced a branch of the Old Believers, a Russian religious movement which rejected the 1652–1666 reforms of the official Russian Orthodox Church. Dugan's Eurasian philosophy owes much to traditional integralism and Nouvelle Droite movements, and as such it resonates with neopaganism, a category which in this context means the movement of Slavic native faith especially in the forms of Anastasianism and Ingalism. Dugan's Eurasianism is often cited as belonging to the same spectrum of these movements, as well as also having influences from Hermetic, Gnostic and Eastern traditions. He himself calls to rely upon Eastern theology and mystical currents. For the development of the fourth political theory, according to Marlene Leruel, his adherence to the old believers allows him to stand between paganism and Orthodox Christianity without formally adopting either of them. His choice is not paradoxical, since, according to him, in the wake of René Guénon, Russian Orthodoxy and especially the old believers have preserved an esoteric and initiatory character which was utterly lost in Western Christianity. As such, the Russian Orthodox tradition may be merged with neopaganism and may host neopaganism's nationalist force, which anchors it in the Russian soil, and separates it from the two other Christian confessions. <laughs> Esotericism, fascism, and integrative geopolitics In the early 1990s Dugan's work at the National Bolshevik Front included research into the roots of national movements and the activities of supporting esoteric groups in the first half of the 20th century. Partnering Christian Boucher, a then member of the French OTO, and building on the national fascist and migratory integrative interest groups in Asia and Europe, they contribute in bringing international politics closer to Russia's Eurasian geopolitical concept. Topic. Stance on Ukraine and role in Russian politics Alexander Dugin supports Putin and his foreign policies but has opposed Russian governments due to their economic policies. His 2007 quote, There are no more opponents of Putin's course and, if there are, they are mentally ill and need to be sent off for clinical examination. Putin is everywhere, Putin is everything, Putin is absolute, and Putin is indispensable," was voted number two in flattery by readers of Kommersant. In the Kremlin, Dugan represents the War Party, a division within the leadership over Ukraine. Dugan is seen as an author of Putin's initiative for the annexation of Crimea by the Russian Federation. He considered the war between Russia and Ukraine to be inevitable and appealed for Putin to start military intervention in eastern Ukraine. Dugan said, the Russian renaissance can only stop by Kiev. During the 2014 pro-Russian conflict in Ukraine, Dugan was in regular contact with pro-Russian separatist insurgents. He described his position as, unconditionally pro-DPR and pro-LPR. A Skype video call posted on YouTube showed Dugan providing instructions to separatists of South and Eastern Ukraine as well as advising Ekaterina Gubareva, whose husband Pavel Gubarev declared himself a local governor and after that was arrested by the Security Service of Ukraine. On 31 March 2014, Oleg Batyarev, a member of the Eurasia Youth Union of Russia founded by Dugan, was arrested. He had trained a group of about 200 people to seize parliament and another government building, according to the Security Service of Ukraine. Dugan also developed links with far-right and far-left political parties in the European Union, including Syriza in Greece, Ataka in Bulgaria, the Freedom Party of Austria, and Front National in France, to influence EU policy on Ukraine and Russia. Dugan stated he was disappointed in Russian President Vladimir Putin, saying that Putin did not aid the pro-Russian insurgents in Ukraine after the Ukrainian army's early July 2014 offensive. In August 2014, Dugan called for a genocide 
of Ukrainians, Halya Koinash of the Kharkiv Human Rights Protection Group said that the influence of Dugin's Eurasian ideology on events in eastern Ukraine and on Russia's invasion of the Crimea was beyond any doubt. According to Vincent Javert, Dugin's radical ideology today became the basis for the internal and foreign policy of the Russian authorities. So Dugin is worth listening to, in order to understand to which faith the Kremlin is leading its country and the whole of Europe. However, according to Alexander Nevzorov, if we had had Kurginian and Dugin instead of Putin, there would have been hell for all of us to pay, they would have unleashed a European and world war without a shadow of a doubt, without considering consequences at all. But Dugin and Kurginian do not have the slightest impact on what is going on in the Kremlin and do not even get coaching there. In another publication, Nevzorov said, Beliefs are only proven by being under bullets, another prescription does not exist. I do not understand why Milanov and Dugin are not there yet." On 10 October 2014, Dugin said, "...only after restoring the Greater Russia that is the Eurasian Union, we can become a credible global player. Now these processes slowed down very much. The Ukrainian maiden was the response of the West to the advance of the Russian integration." He described the Euromaidan as a coup d'état carried out not by the Ukrainians but by the United States. America wishes to wage the war against Russia not by its own hands but by the hands of the Ukrainians. Promising to wink at up to 10,000 victims among the peaceful population of Ukraine and actually demanding the victims, the United States led to this war. The United States carried out the coup d'état during the Maidan for the purpose of this war. The United States raised neo-Nazis Russophobes to the power for the purpose of this war. Dugin said Russia is the major driving force for the current events in Ukraine. Russia insists on its sovereignty, its liberty, responds to challenges thrown down to it, for example, in Ukraine. Russia is attempting to integrate the post-Soviet space. Quote, As Israeli political scientist Vyacheslav Likachev states, if one seriously takes the fact that such a person as Alexander Dugin is the ideologist of the imperial dash for the West, then one can establish that Russia is not going to stop as far as the Atlantic Ocean. In the 2014 article by Dmitry Bikov, YTV, Alexander Dugin and Galina Pishniak crucified a boy. Channel 1 Russia's use of the aired story by Dugin and Pishniak about the allegedly crucified boy as a pretext for escalating the conflict was compared to the case of Bayless. On 9 July 2014, Dugin on his Facebook account wrote a story that a six-year-old child was allegedly nailed down to an advertisement board and shot to death before his father's eyes. On 16 July 2014, Novaya Gazeta provided a videotape of its correspondent Eugen Feldman walking along the main square in Slovyansk, asking local old women if they had heard of the murder of the child. They said such an event did not take place. The website Change.org hosted a petition of citizens who demanded a comprehensive investigation with identification for all persons involved in the fabrication of the plot. On 2 October 2014, Dugan described the situation in Donbass. The humanitarian crisis has long since been raging on the territory of Novorossiya. Already up to a million, if not more, refugees are in the Russian Federation. A large part of the inhabitants of the DPR and the LPR simply moved abroad. In the end of October 2014, Dugan advised the separatists to establish dictatorship in Novorossiya until they win in the confrontation. Topic. Rhetoric about the fifth column The typical rhetoric about the fifth column as foreign agents is used by Dugan for political accusations in many publications. In his 2014 interview published by VZGLYAD and Komsomolskaya Pravda, he says, A huge struggle is being conducted. And, of course, Europe has its own fifth column, its own Bolotnaya square minded people. And if we have them sitting idly and doing nasty things on DOZHD, Europe is indeed dominated and ruled by the fifth column in full swing. This is the same American riffraff. He sees the United States standing behind all the scenes, including the Russian fifth column, according to his statement. The danger of our fifth column is not that they are strong, they are absolutely paltry, but that they are hired by the greatest godfather of the modern world by the United States. 
That is why they are effective, they work, they are listened to, they get away with anything because they have the world power standing behind them." He sees the American Embassy as the center for funding and guiding the Fifth Column and asserts, "...we know that the Fifth Column receives money and instructions from the American Embassy." According to Dugan, the Fifth Column promoted the breakup of the Soviet Union as a land continental construction, seized power under Boris Yeltsin, and headed Russia as the ruling politico economic and cultural elite until the 2000s. The Fifth Column is the regime of liberal reformers of the 1990s and includes former Russian oligarchs Vladimir Gasinsky, Boris Berezovsky, former government officials Mikhail Kasyanov, Boris Nemtsov, Vladimir Ryzkov, artistic, cultural, and media workers, the Echo of Moscow. The Russian State University for the Humanities, the highest ranks of the National Research University Higher School of Economics, a significant part of teachers of the Moscow State Institute of International Relations, and a minority part of teachers of the Moscow State University. Dugan proposes to deprive the fifth column of Russian citizenship and deport the group from Russia. I believe it is necessary to deport the fifth column and deprive them of their citizenship. However, in 2007, Dugan argued, there are no longer opponents of Putin's policy, and if there are, they are mentally ill and should be sent to prophylactic health examination." In 2014, Dugan in an interview to Der Spiegel confirmed that he considers the opponents of Putin to be mentally ill. In one of his publications, Dugan introduced the term the sixth column and defined it as the fifth column which just pretends to be something different. Those who are in favor of Putin, but demand that he stand for liberal values as opposed to the liberal fifth column, which is specifically against Putin. During the 2014 Russian military intervention in Ukraine, Dugan said that all the Russian sixth column stood up staunchly for Ukrainian oligarch Renat Akhmetov. As he asserts, we need to struggle against the fifth and sixth columns. Russian-American artist Mikhail Kemyakin says Dugan is inventing the sixth column. Soon, probably, there would already be the seventh one as well. Quote. The fifth column. Is understandable. That is we, intelligentsia, lousy, dirty, who read Camus. And. The sixth column. In his opinion, is more dangerous, because that is the personal entourage of Vladimir Putin. But he is naive and understands nothing. And as for Dugan, he can tell him who to shoot to death and who to imprison. Maybe, Kudrin and maybe, Medvedev. According to Dugan, the whole Internet should be banned. I think that Internet as such, as a phenomenon is worth prohibiting because it gives nobody anything good. Quote, in June 2012, Dugan said in a lecture that chemistry and physics are demonic sciences, and that all Orthodox Russians need to unite around the President of the Russian Federation in the last battle between good and evil, following the example of Iran and North Korea. He added, If we want to liberate ourselves from the West, it is needed to liberate ourselves from textbooks on physics and chemistry. Dugan has characterized his position on the Ukrainian conflict as Firm opposition to the junta and Ukrainian Nazism that are annihilating peaceful civilians as well as unacceptance of liberalism and American hegemony. <laughs> Loss of department headship During the conflict in Ukraine, Dugan also lost his post as head of the Department of Sociology of International Relations of Moscow State University. In 2014, a petition entitled, We Demand the Dismissal of MSU Sociology Faculty Professor A. G. Dugan, was signed by over 10,000 people and sent to the MSU rector Viktor Sadovny. The petition was started after Dugan in an interview expressed his opinion on how to deal with Ukrainians. Kill them, kill them, kill them. There should not be any more conversations. As a professor, I consider it so. Dugan claimed to have been fired from this post. The university claimed the offer of a department chairmanship resulted from a technical error and that he would remain a professor under contract until September 2014. Dugan wrote the statement of resignation from the faculty because it was necessary to be reappointed to the Moscow State University, but the appointment did not happen, so as a result, he is no longer a staff member of the faculty and a staff member of the Moscow State University. Legal cases against Dugan 
At the end of October 2014, Sergei Kurjinyan, the leader of all Russian movement Essence of Time, sued Dugin because Dugin called Kurjinyan a traitor and accused him of destroying DPR Deputy Foreign Minister Proselkov in the following words. Possessed supporters of traitor Kurjinyan, who is now it turns out is working for oligarchs, Yukos and Israel, declared Sasha Proselkov. Main enemy. After he along with Gubarev did not allow denigrating Russian hero Igor Strelkov with impunity. Dugan added, Kurjinyan crossed a red line, the ideological controversy is one thing, the physical destruction of Russian patriots is another one. Sanctions On the 11th of March 2015, the United States Department of the Treasury added Dugan, as well as his Eurasian Youth Union, to its list of Russian citizens who are sanctioned as a result of their involvement in the Ukrainian crisis. In June 2015, Canada added Dugan to its list of sanctioned individuals. In fiction. He is a character of Yevrozyskoy, something Eurasian, a poem by Dmitry Bikov. Topic: <inaudible> Dugan's works. Several of Dugan's books have been published by the publishing house Arctos, an English language publisher for traditionalist and new right books, which specializes in works by prominent fascists and neo-Nazis. Konflikte der Zukunft, die Rucker der Geopolitik, Bonus 2015. Last War of the World Island, The Geopolitics of Contemporary Russia, Arctos 2015. Eurasian Mission, An Introduction to Neo-Eurasianism, Arctos 2014. Martin Heidegger, The Philosophy of Another Beginning, Washington Summit 2014. Putin vs. Putin, Arctos 2014. Political Platonism, Arctos 2018. Numahia, Voini Uma. Tri Logosa, Apollon, Dionys, Kibela, Akademicheski Proect. V. Poiska Tiamnago Logosa, Akademicheski Proect. The Fourth Political Theory, Arctos. Die Vierte Politische Theory, Arctos. The United States and the New World Order Debate with Olavo de Carvalho, Vide Editorial. Pop Cultura i z Naki Vremeni, Amphora 2005. Philosophia Voini, Yauza 2004. Absolute Nea Redina, Arctogia Tsentr Tamplieri Proletariata, National Bolishvism i Iniciatia, Arctogia Osnovi Geopolitiki, Geopoliticisko Badushchi Rasi, Arctogia Metaphysica Blagoi Vesti, Pravoslavny Esoterism, Arctogia 1996. Mystery Evrazi, Arctogia 1996. Conservativnaya Revolutia, Arctogia 1994. Conspirology in Russian. Topic. See also All Russian Nation Anti-globalization movement Dmitry Kitsikis Eurasianism Greater Russia Intermediate Region Pan-Slavism Russian Nationalism Statism List of Russian philosophers National Socialism disambiguation. <laughs>